What's up, man? How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. Your name's Eric. Yeah, I'm Eric Sibley. What's up, bro? Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Awesome. And you're going to school. Is this for a school project? It is for a school project. So I'm here studying at Brigham Young University in Utah. Brigham Young University in Utah. Gotcha. And for the, I'm in an entrepreneurship class. And then as a part of an assignment, we have to interview three entrepreneurs throughout the semester. And he tells us to aim high. And gotcha. so Sweet. it's all about Am I, am I pretty high up there? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm so glad that you responded. This is an awesome opportunity, man. Sweet, dude. Well, yeah, I'm excited to uh, talk to you. Whatever questions you have, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm super passionate about entrepreneurship. Being one myself, you know, I have my fitness coaching business, as you might have seen. I also have a couple of other businesses that I run or that are all in like the health and wellness space based around my social media. So whatever questions you have, let's get it rolling. Uh, I just want to start. So what made you choose the fitness industry? I know you started lifting at 16 from your videos. Is that what just gave you a passion for it? Yeah. So when I was 16 years old, when I was bored in high school, honestly, like I always wanted something more. And so that's ultimately what got me into the gym. And I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger and I saw these like people that had made incredible progress uh, with their physiques. And so I thought, you know, if I start now, by the time that I get to my 20s, I'll have like a really, really cool physique. And also all these other people were starting to pop up on the internet, like David Laid. I'm not sure if you know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was one of my main inspirations um, because I was watching all of these other people. Uh, and as social media was coming out, the fitness industry was starting to grow and bodybuilding was starting to become so much bigger. You know, I saw that when I was younger, I, I've been posting for a really long time, like almost as long as I've been lifting, I've been posting on Instagram about my journey on YouTube. Um, I was just always fascinated with fitness. I absolutely love how fitness for me has been the cornerstone um, of everything that I've achieved in life, I do ultimately, I attribute it back to the discipline that I was able to learn from fitness at a young age. Um, it teaches you delayed gratification. It teaches you to work towards something even when life is hectic. It teaches you that uh, people okay. treat you better when you are in shape, when, you, when they see that you... Um, that you care about the way that you look and that you put a lot of effort, you know, into your body, people will respect you more, people will listen to you more. And early on, I saw those things. And I knew that it was one of those aspects where similar to long term investing, you know, if you do it now in the future, it's definitely going to pay off, it's going to pay off, you know, it, it's going to be a uh, compounding if that makes sense. And the results are going to be incredible. So fitness has always been that for me. And I always wanted to, uh, I, I, I always wanted to spread, you know, my, uh, my story, but also give other people the, uh, sense of, you know, accomplishment and fulfillment, um, and, you know, self-confidence that I have personally gained from, you know, working out in fitness. So that's what it's all about. Yeah. And I have a lot of respect for you because your business is all about giving back to others. You want to show other people how to live this life path that you've been able to do. And I actually have one of your quotes from an Instagram post you made that I really like, which is basically what you're saying. It's if you're not working towards something, you're missing out on what life's all about, whether it's learning something new, pushing your limits or making progress in your health and fitness. Everyone needs something to strive for. 100 yeah, percent. I'm a I'm a firm believer in that. I got a lot of people that come to me, a lot of people that come to me depressed not wonder like not you know wanting to live anymore i got a lot of people that come to me they're not happy with where they're at in life and to be honest i've been there i've been in all these situations it's one of the reasons why i love coaching so much is because i see myself in every single one of the people that i coach 
it it genuinely makes me like emotional talking about it but i have conversations with people where they are they are struggling with some some very very intense things and i do my best to help people through all walks of life you know on the fitness side of things but also to encourage them to you know push forward to learn more to be more that's what life is all about and that's ultimately you know what i derive meaning from and i wanted to be able to show the show others that that's exactly what they should be doing as well that's a beautiful thing, man. That's what I saw about helping other people. Because you can have one thing they really preach to us at the Entrepreneurship Center here is you can go out, you can have all the success, everything. It means nothing if you don't help other people, you don't keep your family, and you don't keep your faith. 100%. Yeah, I uh, I have a term that I like to throw around a lot called dirty money. And that's basically where people make money in industries that are destroying people's lives, you know, and aren't ultimately like benefiting people, not helping them to rise up to become a better version of their self. And that type of money, that type of money corrupts. Like if your business isn't based around trying to help people, like it is ultimately going to, it's going to wear down at you. It's going to eat away at you from the inside, you know? So when it comes to being an entrepreneur, you know, you need to be fully devoted to actually helping people that, that needs to be why you're in it, you know, because it's very, very easy to be corrupted by the money as soon as you start seeing it come in. And there are a whole lot of ways that you can make money especially in the fitness industry. If you just want to sacrifice your morals, if you want to sacrifice your values, you know, mm -hmm. I've been offered ridiculous amounts of money to do like <laughs> some really messed up stuff. You know, I know other people that make their living, you know, doing things like that. And it's just, it, it's abhorrent to me. I think it's terrible. I think being an entrepreneur can be either a blessing, you know, for all parties involved, you know, yourself and the people that you're working for, or it can be, it can very much be a curse both for yourself and for the people that you're dealing with. Yeah. Props to you, man, for keeping your values throughout this journey. Like, obviously you've seen success, you built your business, you could have gone on this way and made a whole lot more money, but you decide to stick to your values and build it up the right way. So I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. And also, I have a lot of respect for you because you're a natural lifter. Thank and you. I appreciate it. You did it the hard way, man. I just, I just saw a clip. The It was like you hitting a back day. or you were doing an incline press? You looked insane, bro, for a natural <laughs> Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, eight years, eight years of training will get pretty much – if you take it seriously, if you take your nutrition and training seriously – like you're going to look really impressive after eight years of training, you know, and if somebody, you know, there are a lot of people out there that say that they can't, the truth is they can, they're just, they're not willing to put the work in at the end of the day. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm on two years, but I, whenever I started lifting because I just had ankle surgery, I tore my ankle in basketball mm -hmm. and then I was eating like I was still, um, yep, training. you know, doing all these sports and everything. Mm -hmm. And I got fat. I got like a chunky face and everything. Then I really started taking my fitness seriously. I lost a lot of weight and then uh, I've gained it back. But it's like I still kept like the same body fat percentage mm -hmm. that I had whenever I had the weight gone. So Good. Like, Good. But I need Fantastic. to keep going. I got love handles still, man. Keep, keep pushing it, man. I love it. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about failure. Mm -hmm. You've talked a lot about you know, this big failure. You So if I got the story right, your TikTok is blowing up like in the early stages. Mm -hmm. And then you moved out of your parents' house. You moved away. You're having this success. And then your TikTok got deleted or something. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that's, and then um, it, you, you said how it crushed you. Yep. It, it felt like the world was collapsing in on you. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that it's a part of every single person's journey when it comes to if you if you want to be an entrepreneur, failure is just going to be something that you're going to get accustomed to. And there's two different types of failure. You know, there's the type of failure where you're actually giving up and you're throwing in the towel and you're saying, I'm not going to try anymore. I'm not going to try to improve my life. I'm not going to try to build a better business, all these types of things. That's not the type of failure I'm talking about. You know, if you're if you're an entrepreneur, uh, like truly an entrepreneur, that type of failure isn't an option. You know, there's a type of failure where, you know, you pivot, you try to do things differently, and you learn from your mistakes. And that's the type 
you know, that you're supposed to become very, very familiar with as a, uh, as an entrepreneur in that situation. Yeah. I moved all the way across the U S um, I really, really thought that things were going to, uh, work out because, you know, like I said, my TikTok was popping off and then, you know, that TikTok ended up getting deleted. It was absolutely brutal. You know, I was trying to start up my coaching business at the time as well. Um, I've had multiple things fall through over the years, um, after putting in work, you know, for, for years, I thought things were finally starting to really, really pay off. And then I just got humbled again, you know, ended up right back at bedrock. And I think most entrepreneurs have stories like that because that's the reality of the situation. Like most likely the first thing that you try is not going to work out and you're going to put a lot of work into it, you know, and you're going to have to pivot. You're going to have to change things. You're going to have to learn from your mistake and then get back up. You know, there's this really funny uh, clip. I, and uh, have you ever seen the movie Megamind? Yeah, Megaman, yeah. Yeah, so there's this uh clip where they find Metro Man at the end of the at the end of the movie he's been like hiding out in his bunker and the lady uh -huh. just starts like chucking all this stuff at him for like betraying mankind and like leaving. And oh yeah, they throw getting, the guitar at his Yeah, head it, like the guitar and like the dresser and like the chair and all this type of stuff and it's just kind of like breaking over top of him. And this meme that basically shows like Metro Man just it, everything's just like bouncing off of him. It says when she tries to emotionally manipulate me and ruin my life, but you're an entrepreneur <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah, just yeah. like, everything's just breaking over the top of your head. That's honestly what it feels like. like I, I very much feel numb to the other stresses in my life because being an entrepreneur has tested me so much. Like I have, I have had my lowest lows trying to make this, you know, my business work, you know, when I, when things happen, when everything falls apart, when you think that everything is just crumbling around you, you know, that, that really gives you perspective and it, it teaches you that, you know, these other struggles in life, maybe, maybe they aren't so bad, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just, it's that stressful. It's that hard. Like ultimately at the end of the day, you need to be prepared, you know, for that failure and uh, it'll, it'll weather you for sure. Yeah. And even though, like, obviously, there's going to be failure. Uh, what I've learned throughout the classes and also talking to other entrepreneurs, the biggest thing is to just start. Mm -hmm. Like, even though your first uh, go through failed, look at the seed it planted for you to mm -hmm. go then go back and build up this this second wave of just pure success, pure inspiring people to pick up their lives, pick up their fitness have better morals and stick to their morals, mm -hmm. financial success, everything. And it's in your conquest method. I I watched a video of like what your training program entails. Mm -hmm. And it is physical aspect, financial, spiritual, relational, and mental. Yep. It's like everything goes back to becoming a better person. It's not just like you're going to go out and do this hard thing. You're going to get physically fit. But along with that, you're going to learn these other principles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. To be honest with you, failure is the quickest way. If you if you deal with failure properly, it's the easiest way to success. You know, when it comes to sales, when it comes to business, like every single time you get kicked, you should be learning something. Every single time you get kicked in the balls, it should be teaching you something. If you're not learning something from your mistakes, you're doing something wrong. But every single entrepreneur is going to get, you know, kicked in the balls like a certain amount of times before they learn. And so what I encourage people to do, you know, I personally, I work with uh, people in something called my empire blueprint, which is where I help people scale their fitness coaching businesses. And I basically walk them through how I built my, you know, fitness coaching business to be up to where it is now. And these people are looking to do something similar. What I tell them is go like fail the sales calls bomb the sales calls, make the mistakes, like go through, try things out. It is, it is a massive game of trial and error. And the more failure that you're going to have, the, the it's, success is coming faster and faster if you're learning from those mistakes. Because the more you learn, the more you know not to do certain things. Exactly, 100%. And I just tell people, I say, go try it out. Like try out different things. Do the sales calls bomb like just absolutely get crushed by the failures and that should you'll actually start to almost get uh feel alive 
when you run into that. Like I remember in my first couple of years of starting my business, I'd be like, yes, like I failed so like miserably this week, like, but I learned so much and next week is going to look completely different because I'm, because I'm learning as time goes on. So you start to get excited, you know, with that, with that failure, you're like, okay, like things aren't working here. They are going to work somewhere else. I'm gathering data and ultimately, yeah, as an entrepreneur, that's super important. Yeah, and I think um so our entrepreneurship professor, he basically told us like you need to go do summer sales because you're gonna get constant failure. You're gonna knock on somebody's door and they're gonna come out with you with a shotgun and tell you to yeah. get off the zombie. Yeah. And also you're gonna have like you almost close them and then something scares them away. You're gonna have so many failures throughout so that many. summer, but you're gonna learn what works. And I yeah. think being a salesman is a pretty important part of being an entrepreneur because yep, you're kind of selling yourself more than the yep. business. Trial by fire, 100%. Just throwing yourself into like the chaos that is door-to-door -door sales. It's great for a lot of people. You know, it teaches you, it teaches you number one, that you eat what you kill. And as an entrepreneur, that's mm -hmm. a super important mentality. It's what's different from the normal people, the nine to five mentality no longer are you reliant on just making sure you sit in that desk for eight hours a day to collect a paycheck. Like now what you do is a direct result of what you are going to get. What you kill is what you are going to eat. And if you don't perform, then, well, let's just say you need to perform. <laughs> like that's yeah, pretty that's much true. how it You goes. just wasted four months of your life for like $9,000 if you can't. Yeah. And it's a massive accelerant, you know, when your back is up against the wall, that's when you perform the best, you know, and that it sort of puts you in that fight or flight mode, like being an entrepreneur, like I have to perform or I am going like there, there is no other option. Like I have to make it happen, you know, and that's, that's something that a lot of people don't utilize. You know, they spend their entire life working a job, which is, which is totally fine. You can make tons of progress, especially on the career side of things like, I'm not saying that everybody should be an entrepreneur. I think there are plenty of careers that you can pursue where you can be successful, but you should constantly be chasing like that promotion. You should be chasing that raise. Mm -hmm. You should be trying to be better. If you find yourself very content with where you are at in your occupation, like you, you need a kick in the ass. Like you should keep moving. You should keep trying to become better because that's, that's when people fall into these pits. If they aren't moving up, they're either moving down or they're staying the same. That's a recipe for mediocrity and it's a recipe for de like becoming depressed. You know, people want to see progress over the years. And if they're not making the progress, things become stale. Life becomes miserable, in my opinion. So you got to keep things moving. I completely agree. I actually had to give up watching Instagram reels and like basically anything that will give me like instant dopamine hits because I just felt like getting stagnant you know what i mean mm -hmm. like why would i go work and try to build this business up whenever i can just get the instant dopamine yep 100 right? it's a massive problem that so many people have whether it's with porn whether it's with instagram reels youtube shorts tiktok all these things are sucking your drive out of you you know they're they're legitimately they're taking all of the dopamine that you would get from pursuing something and trying to become a better person. And you're just using it all, you know, doing something that's getting you nowhere. You know, I also very much limit my media consumption. It's one of the biggest things that I recommend for young men that come to me like that are depressed. Limit your media consumption. Consume things that, that bring you up, you know, consume things that give you life. You know, there's so many things out there that are just soul sucking. Like if the content that you're that you're watching is this brain rot content, it's everywhere. And people are just living in a constant state of brain rot, getting their dopamine from stuff that's getting them absolutely no nowhere. If you can harness the power of your dopamine, you can you can change your entire life. It's extremely powerful. Yeah, and I know people who have like eleven hours of screen time just doom scrolling, mm -hmm. and it's just like insane. Uh, it makes me mad for them. Yeah, like I want them to go out and attack the world. It's like Dana White said, like you need to be a savage whenever you're young, mm -hmm. so then whenever you're older, then you can live like nobody else is going to.
Exactly. 100%. Totally agree. Yeah. And one of, so just some more entrepreneurship questions. What advice would you give to a student looking to become an entrepreneur? Ooh, that's a great question. Biggest piece of advice is invest in your extra curricular education as much as you've invested in your current, you know, education, education. <laughs> so your university, a lot of people will go to a college and they'll spend tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sometimes they'll go in debt for the rest of their life just to learn something, you know, that they think is going to help them. I have my own doubts when it comes to like college, you know, business school and things along those lines. I do think that there are certain jobs that require certain degrees for which college can be incredibly yes. useful. But at the same time, education should and does not end at the end of a university degree. You know, once you have finished your education, whether it's high school, whether it's university, you should be learning throughout your entire life. That learning is part of what gives you purpose. Like so many, you see it happen with so many people. They graduate, they graduate high school or they graduate college and they just immediately become extremely depressed. They start going nowhere. And it's because for so long they were being forced to learn. And that learning that is nourishing you, like that learning is like pumping life into you. And at the end of the day, as soon as you stop that, people struggle with meaninglessness. So the, what's the moral of the story? Continue to learn and don't be scared to invest in your education. I spent, I did not go to college myself. I went for, you know, my first year before I actually ended up <laughs> dropping out. Um, but I have continued to invest in my education and find mentors and people that have helped me so much when it comes to scaling my business and building things up to the point that I am at now. Like, I thank you to extra curricular education. I have been able to far supersede what I ever thought possible in terms of career and business goals when it came to fitness at the age of 23 and 24. Like I, I thought it was going to take me to, I was 40 to 50 years old before I would have this type of success. I completely agree with you, but also there's a lot of opportunities you get from being a student as an entrepreneur. Like, I don't know how many other colleges have this, but we have this place called the Rollins Center, which is a center mm -hmm. for entrepreneurship. And they'll literally give you $27,000 dollars. That's a couple, like a base, yeah, to start your business. That's great. And there are very, very good opportunities that come along. I would say one of the most valuable things that you have with college is networking. Just in general, yes. the people Dude. that you meet in your classes, like those are going to be, be the people that you make money with in the future. You know, there are definitely values to college for sure. Yeah, getting out of New Mexico. I love New Mexico with all my heart. It's my home. I love the food, the culture, everything, the people. Mm -hmm. But Coming here to Utah, which is really like a center for entrepreneurship, there's mm -hmm. so many entrepreneurs, especially in Utah County. It just opened my eyes. Yeah. Like all the different possibilities and the people I've met. I would have never even thought that being an entrepreneur was that possible until I came here and realized yeah. it's so attainable. You just have 100%. to want it. Yeah. And exactly. you have to really do it. Yeah. Totally agree. So. What do you wish you would have known before you started? Hmm. What do I wish I would have known before I started? I wish somebody would have sat me down and number one told me, you know, don't be scared to continue to invest in your education, invest in yourself. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, another thing is pay your team well delegate, learn to delegate to those around you. I'm kind of a control freak. And when it comes to my business, especially trying to grow, it's very difficult for me because I want to be in control of everything. But hiring, you know, people that work hard, people that are qualified for the job has been one of the best things I've ever done with my life, you know, and expanding the pie. You know, if you, I'm trying to eat the whole pie myself. That's, you know, how I am with my, because I'm a control freak. But at the mm -hmm. same time, if we just expand the overall size of the pie and then give everybody different slices, maybe I'm not getting the whole pie anymore. But at the same time, like the pie is so much bigger, you know, like there's yeah. so much more prosperity coming to everyone involved. 
So that's going to be a really big one uh, that I think that I really wish that I would have known beforehand. Um, and I guess one more thing that I really wish that I had known before I started is just how much your mental state over the years is going to be affected like by the actual business. Because at the end of the day, what you have to realize as an entrepreneur is that you, you, you and oftentimes your life and your business are one. And that is, that is something that was hard for me to come to terms with at the very beginning. But once you realize that, once you realize that like you are the product that you are selling, things become very, very intense, but it also opens up very much like the possibility to expand things beyond what you ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just going off of that. So how do you balance your life? Like you're saying your business is your life, but how do you make time for church, your family? You know, I, are you married? I am not married. No, I'm actually single. Nice, man. Welcome yep, to the so fight. Exactly. I know. Yeah, I'm back here <laughs> uh, as of a couple months ago. Uh, when it comes to uh, balancing my life, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of balance, to be honest with you. I think that it is kind of it's partially a lie, you know, that people tell you in order to uh, in order to keep you mediocre, in order to um, make you content with the fact that you're not trying. Like a lot of people say that like, oh, balance, like only work 40 hours a week. If you're working any more than that, it's oh, like, no, dude, that's, that's, that's bad. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't subscribe to that at all. I think that in like you should be wanting to go over above and beyond. Um if you actually want to be successful when it comes to my life, I try to take Sundays off as best as I possibly can. Um, I am a Christian. And so the Sabbath day is holy. That's where I go to church. That's where I spend a lot of time with family is on that day. And I try to do rest on there as best as possible. Um, when it comes to uh, balance, I do have employees now where if I want to do something like, for example, tonight, it's Halloween. I'm going to be going to a couple you know, parties, hanging out with some friends nice. I haven't seen in a while. Like I will be delegating like certain tasks during that time, like to my team, you know, and making sure that things are getting done while I am, you know, going out and having fun. To be honest with you. I haven't taken a full break from my business in years. Like I, even when I go on summer vacation to like, you know, our lake house and things along those lines, or if I'm traveling somewhere, I'm still working while I'm doing it. The amount that I work might change. Like I might drop down to working six hours a day. That's about as low as I ever go. Um, and that feels like a vacation in and of itself. But to me, when having not not doing any work just isn't very fulfilling. Like I like being able to do work and then go out and play like, you know, during during the mm -hmm. day as well. So I try to I try to keep a healthy balance of it that makes me sane. Like at the end of the day, what I was saying about like the mental health side of things when it comes to being an entrepreneur is you have to take liberties and give yourself as much balance as you can afford that keeps you like functioning mentally. Because if you go too far down the rabbit hole, if you work too hard, you know, you can get pretty depressed. And so I make sure, you know, rein myself back if I'm working too hard, you know, make sure that I'm taking breaks, you know, mental breaks to give myself some time to recover and hopefully go harder in the future. <laughs> yeah. Some, you got to do some certain stuff, like always make sure you go to church on Sunday. At least that's a big one for me. Massive. Make, making sure that I'm, keeping accountable that getting the sacrament in repenting for your sins mm -hmm. it's like oh it's also a good reset for the whole week 100 percent. i totally agree it gets you that's like kind of like the reflection day for mm -hmm. me like how i do this week what i do need to do better next week because i'm not really focusing on work per se mm -hmm. totally but yeah so is being an entrepreneur something that you would recommend to me? 100%. I I think that just the, in the short conversation that we've had, I think it's definitely something that you should you should probably try out. I think everybody should try it out, you know, but at the same time, like I understand that like some people can't handle the stress, 
and that that's okay. Like some people just simply can't handle the stress. I, I, I would say if you're a, if you're a young man, you know, in a good state of mind, you have good energy, you have good health. I say, go for it. I say, try it out 100%. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know I'm sure you have other appointments and stuff, but I really want to thank you for giving me this opportunity, sharing some of your entrepreneurial wisdom for me. And after I have a business started up, I'm going to shoot you a text and be like, look what I did, man. Fantastic, dude. I love to hear that. Fantastic. Keep me in the loop. I appreciate you um, reaching out. Um, I'm happy to help. Let me know how the uh, the rest of the project goes. Uh, keep me posted. And good luck with your entrepreneurial journey, man. It was great to meet you. Thank you so much. All and right. Yeah. Have a good rest of your day, Eric. See you, man. See you, you too. Happy Halloween. You as well. Bye.